Chat Interactive. And uh, today we're going to be talking about techniques and tools for teaching language with content with, content, uh, with uh, Letizia Chinganotto and Daniela Cucurulo. And um, uh, buongiorno or um, buonasera. Uh, for those of you who are who are in Italy, I'd like to give a brief introduction to EdChat Interactive first, and a little bit of an introduction to the Shindig platform also. Uh, Tom Whitby and Steve Anderson and I started EdChat Interactive oh about two years ago. So we felt that uh, the um, the way that webinars were being conducted uh, over the internet wasn't really the way adults learn and we wanted to find something that was more interactive and so we decided to try to play around with different formats and we found this shindig platform which which allows people to participate not just watch presentations and so this gives you the opportunity to interact to reflect to participate which is really a lot more in aligned with andragogy or the way adults learn let me just go through a little bit about the Shindig platform. Uh, all of you should see an avatar, your your avatar, uh, on the screen at this point, and you notice that there's a three-item menu underneath your avatar. The first is asking a question. If you ask a question, if you were to click on that, you'd get a dialog box. Uh, you can ask a question. Uh, I'll see the question, and then I can uh, pass it to our leaders. Uh, so that's the first way of interacting is asking text questions. Uh, the second way of interacting is, is if you have a microphone and a webcam, uh, you can raise your hand, and we can bring you up to the stage, and you can interact with the, with the leaders directly on stage. That's the raise hand icon. I can see that your hand is raised and uh, we can interact that way. The, there may be times where we ask people to share their own experiences. And if you're willing to do that, we'll say, if you're willing to share, please please click on the raise hand icon or we'll say, please raise your hand. That doesn't mean go like this. <laughs> that means click on raise hand and uh, up we'll see you and we'll bring you up on stage. And then the third way of interacting is through text chat. If you click on that icon, and I'd like that you to do that now, and why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, where are you from and what do you hope to learn today? Um, so click on the text chat icon and why don't you uh, put that in and, uh, you know, Daniela and Leticia will be able to see that, uh, who you are and so will the other participants. And this is the third way of interacting through text chat. I will say that there is one person who cannot see the text chats at all, and that's me. So I hope that you're having an opportunity to uh, text chat with each other and introduce yourselves, but, uh, but I can't see that. So those are three ways of interacting. And now, um, oh, let me just go, uh, sorry, uh, a few more items. If you move your cursor over your avatar, you see that there's another four item menu that pops up. Um, probably the most important there is to is the audio video settings. If you want to adjust them, then you can click on that gear, uh, which then allows you to, to uh, modify your audio settings or your video settings. Uh, you can also lock uh, your screen so other people can't interact with you and you can mute your microphone. Uh, so um, those are the those are the seven items on the menu. Uh, the final way of interacting is to form small groups. Uh, instead of doing this right now, we may do this during the uh, during the presentation. But what you'll notice is that if you click on the avatar of another person, you can enter into a private video conversation with that other person. So this is a good way. We, we very often use this uh, for people to discuss questions like, how would you do this in your classroom? How would you do this in your school? What would be the obstacles to doing this in your school? What's an example that you might try this in? And then have people work together and talk about how they might apply that. Uh, instead of doing this, I'd like, like to... Um, 
to move on because there's so much information we want to present to you today. Uh, we'll say next week we're having our uh, final session in July. Uh, this is Kathy Schrock. A number of you probably know her. Uh, she is very, very well known, uh, an international speaker. She spoke three or four times at ISTE. She's spoken at FETC. She's being brought to us through FETC. And she's going to be talking about using activate, activators and summarizers to enhance learning. You, you, you know that uh, you can't just teach something, uh, but you're best off introducing it some way to make people really want to learn it, teaching it, and then summarizing it in a way that locks it into long-term memory. And she's going to be talking about tech tools and techniques that you can use to uh, introduce and to summarize uh, lessons. That'll be next week. And then uh, really without further ado, I'd like to introduce Leticia and Daniela and let me bring them up. Okay, and here is coming up Leticia. And Leticia, I think you're on and I'm bringing up Daniela as well. So Leticia, can you hear us? Yes, sure. Oh, good. Okay, well, well uh, buenas tardes. How are you? Hello, ciao, buonasera. Buongiorno there, right? Yes, buongiorno. Yes, it's morning here. Buongiorno, right. So, and Daniela, you're up as well, correct? You oh, can hear hello, us? Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. So, Daniela, you're coming from Napoli or from Naples. And Letizia, where are you? Uh, from Rome. I'm from Rome. In Rome. So, we have New York, we have Rome, we have Napoli. Um, so now the question is, which of those cities has the best Italian food? Naples, of course. Naples, of course. I agree on Naples. <laughs> <laughs> I think Naples, also, although I've only been in Naples once. So I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to Letizia's slides, but why don't you, while I'm getting the slides up, um, Daniela, why don't you introduce yourself because you're... Um, you know, you're a full professor at a university, and Leticia, you're a researcher in the use of language. Why don't you to introduce yourselves while I bring your slides up, and then uh, Leticia, you can go into the slides. Okay, Leticia, you can start. I mean, you start with your introduction, and then I I start with mine and go on with the presentation. Okay. Okay, I'm. Uh, okay, hello everyone, I'm Daniela. Uh, I'm from Naples, in the south of Italy. I'm a teacher, a teacher of English. I'm also passionate of multimedia. Uh, recently, I've been researching on uh, content language integrating learning and I'm an expert of uh, uh, multimodal and uh, multimedia teaching. Uh, today, we're going to talk with Letizia on techniques and tools to teach language to content. That is another focus uh, that I uh, will share with you uh, how to approach uh, the content language integrating learning. And Letizia, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Daniela. So, um, hello, everybody. Thank you, Mitch, for this great opportunity. We are very happy to be here today with you, and uh, because we've been following that chat uh, through your uh, emails and newsletters, but never been actors. So, just uh, um, a great honor for us to be to be here. Um, so, I'm a researcher at uh, Indire, which is the National Institute for Documentation, Innovation, and Educational Research in Italy. It works for the Ministry of Education. So we have um, uh, specific um, commitments by the Ministry of Education, uh, but we also have our own research areas. And um, my main research areas are uh, language learning and CLIL, content language integrated learning, and technology enhanced language learning and, and CLIL. So I'm passionate about technology as well, uh, but not as experts as Daniela. Daniela is, uh, is the best. So um, uh, we're going to talk about um, the, uh, the use of um, uh, technologies or te techniques and tools for um, uh, uh, teaching language with content. This is a particular perspective uh, uh, because um, uh, we normally use in, uh, in Italy uh, our uh, the definition that we adopted for, for CLIL, which is Anglo-Saxon uh, acronym um, uh, for content and language integrated learning, um, is, uh, you know, the integration between content and language. Uh, so uh, teaching content through the language. So it's interesting to talk also about 
the, the opposite perspective. So teaching language with content and, um, uh, but in, in, you know, in, in clear methodology is uh, uh, the two focus are just um, the same uh, level of importance. So we're going to, to, to share some examples um, of techniques uh, in this area. I'm going to just introduce um, a little bit the framework um, uh, of our um, uh, research area and um, uh, some um, uh, ideas about uh, 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 the research uh, trends in this field. And then Daniela is going to tell you more about the um, tools, uh, practical ideas to, uh, be, to, to be used in, in class. But of course, um, if uh, uh, Mitch is going to tell us uh, if there are questions or maybe doubts or whatever, so feel free, please feel free to write in the chat or just uh, um, raise your hands. And if you want to interact at any uh, point um, of our discussion, we can, uh, of course, interrupt and uh, give you the floor. Uh, I think that Mitch can do it for us, right? Okay, so uh, I was talking about uh, the, the definition of CLIL, um, uh, which is um, uh, the Anglo-Saxon uh, acronym for this methodology, Content and Language Integrated Learning, um, fostered by the European Commission. So um, uh, we have uh, uh, this strong focus uh, from the European Commission, considering it at, as an um, um, innovative methodology, uh, interactive and uh, um, uh, innovative as uh, you can see from, from the picture, because it can, um, first of all, promote plurilingualism, uh, and this is one of the main objectives, and it also can, can innovate the, um, and, uh, and improve the quality of, of education in, in general. But as you can see, there are some of the, um, other um, ways, other acronyms, and um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in, um, uh, in, in, in the States and in Canada, uh, content-based instruction is um, the one that is uh, um, uh, closer to, 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 to our clear. Um, then initially we adopted, yes, the Anglo-Saxon uh, version. Can you go on, Mitch, sorry, for the, uh, the next slide? Yes, so these are just the, said, the different um, different uh, ways, the different, uh, it's, it's an umbrella term in the sense that it can include uh, a wide range of different approaches, of different, um, different ways of um, integrating or mixing language and content or content and language. So it's just um, uh, according to um, uh, the um, uh, also the um, stress uh, that we can we can give to uh, one aspect um, uh, more than than, than than another one um, and we have for example in um, uh, in Italy and uh, in, in a lot of other uh, European countries a strong focus on English as a medium of instruction that of course in the states is uh, is not the case of course but uh, um, it could be you know the, the opposite perspective and um, uh, we, we have a lot of um, programs working in and also uh, in higher education at university a lot of universities have chosen uh, english as a, as a medium of instruction for their uh, programs can we get, go on mitch sorry Okay, so the, a little bit about the frameworks uh, behind this clear methodology, uh, and um, here you can you can see some um, uh, of the renowned experts in uh, CLIL, like Dokoil. Um, Dokoil talks about the four C's which are behind um, clear methodology. So content, uh, because of course uh, we are going to learn um, uh, subject content that could be history, that could be um, uh, maths or science or whatever through a formal language. Cognition, because of course um, uh, these are uh, you know, co cognitive skills that are activated, and communication because it's always um, uh, a communicative approach, so the focus is on, on, on oral interaction, on read, but it's communication in a holistic perspective, and culture, because culture is the background, uh, the cultural background of any interaction. And as far as communication is concerned, we can move to Cummins' um, uh, framework, talking about um, uh, the difference between BICS and, and CALP, so uh, basic interpersonal communication skills and uh, cognitive academic language proficiency. That means that when we use clear methodology, we start from um, a basic um, level of communication, that is, the, the language um, uh, that we use in um, so, uh, when we talk about foreign language language or second language. Uh, so imagine in the States could be Italian, Spanish or uh, whatever. Um, we can use this 
uh, big, uh, the sort of basic uh, interpersonal communication skills um, that are uh, relevant to the daily life. So just communicating in a social interaction and with families, friends, and so on. But with CLIL, we have to make a sort of shift um, towards this cognitive academic language uh, proficiency, which is um, referred to the language of schooling. So we have to uh, improve also, you know, a higher level of competence in, in the foreign or second language, uh, including, you know, specific vocabulary and structure, um, which are relevant to the uh, that particular uh, subject area. And so this is, a, uh, you know, a wider um, uh, and higher level of language competence. Uh, Mahisto, another expert, um, talks about um, the, um, uh, you know, this um, uh, sort of revolutionary approach, CLIL, involving um, uh, different, um, all the different stakeholders in the community, in the school community. So not only teachers and students, but uh, all the other parents, trainers, researchers, all the, so all the um, uh, school community as a whole. And um, um, because it's, it's another, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's considered a uh, uh, a new way of um, uh, so rethinking, uh, reshaping your teaching practice and, of course, the learning processes. In fact, it, it includes, um, as I said, as an umbrella term, in because it includes a wide range of uh, uh, strategies that are uh, all interactive, active, and learner-centered. In the sense that the learner is always uh, at the center of the process, so it's not um, a top-down delivery just. Uh, the lessons, but is a very active and interactive process where the students is the protagonist. Uh, can we go on, Mitch? So if, if there are any questions or any doubts or whatever, um, uh, please, Mitch, let us know. And Daniela, if you want to interrupt, if you want to integrate, of course, feel free. So we were talking about uh, Marsh is the uh, inventor of the CLEAR acronym. Um, and here it talks about the CLEAR trajectory for the future development. Um, and Khalil um, is, you know, can give the answer to a lot of questions like um, the demand for additional languages. We have um, a lot of, you know, um, families and uh, uh, so parents pushing towards um, uh, additional languages in the school curriculum, of course. Uh, and um, it's, it helps, Khalil methodology helps um, building up a, a competence uh, based curriculum. So um, we, we want to um, uh, we want to work um, in our curricula uh, not on uh, uh, programs. I mean, uh, as um, you know, specific content um, uh, just to uh, um, uh, learn by heart or whatever, but just um, to work on competencies to develop students' competencies. Uh, so, parents' students' expectations um, uh, and uh, the demands for platforms to enact quality in educational systems. So, as I said, CLIL is um, perceived as um, a driver for success and for uh, a better quality in, uh, in education. Can we go on, Meet? Yeah, so as I was saying, um, the um, so clear methodologies is an umbrella term, including a lot of uh, teaching strategies that, according to John Hattie, and we are, we are talking about this um, a meta study that uh, um, dates back to 2009, but is uh, always you know is, is um, growing and, and updating, uh, and it's called visible learning. So John Hattie talks about the um, uh, different um, strategies, teaching strategies that can have a high impact on the learning process and make the learning visible. Uh, and in this meta study, it, it gives um, uh, a particular indicator, a particular score to each teaching strategy. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, and um, uh, the, the, red, the green bar that you can see um, includes um, all the uh, those strategies which are uh, really relevant, which have a strong impact on the learning. So mastery learning, teaching, problem solving, um, spaced practice, reciprocal teaching, feedback, metacognition, note taking, and direct instruction, concept mapping, and worked examples. These are all uh, just some of the um, uh, highest impact strategies on the learning process and um, uh, CLIL can adopt, can include this this, this uh, teaching strategy. So that's why uh, we push towards CLIL in, uh, in our school curriculum. And in Italy, it, it is mandatory in, uh, um, since 2010, according to a reform law, um, it, it's, uh, it has become uh, mandatory in all upper secondary school. Can you go on, Mitch? 
yeah, so um, uh, the uh, digital dimension. So why this um, uh, this link with the with the digital? Uh, why the importance of uh, the digital dimension? So David Marsh himself talk about these new acronyms: digital as a second language and digital as a foreign language. So um, it's, it's a new language that itself, and the D is uh, you know the, a very important dimension. The first letter of these two acronyms. Um, so that's why the digital trajectory. Um, uh, that David Marsh um, uh, designs for for CLIL is, is particularly important, and this is because our students are called screenagers, who so are constantly exposed to a screen. To um, uh, you know, they, they they communicate with the world, with their peers, but with the the world in general through a screen, uh, through their smartphone um, uh, mainly, um, and that's why we have to um, consider it. Is this we have to consider this this aspect is this a uh, code uh, channel of communication which is their um, daily way of communicating. And we could exploit it for educational purposes. That's why, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, and for CLIL, it's particularly, and language learning in general, it's particularly effective. Can we go on, Mitch, please? Yeah, so the, um, these are our students. Our students are 21st century students and they have to, 21st century generation. And so they have to um, uh, develop a wide range of skills that are called soft skills or um, 21st century uh, skills. And we, you can have some examples here in this, this wheel um, of the six Cs. There are different frameworks, four Cs or six skills in this case. We have six um, that are the... Um, the 20th century skills that um, uh, schools have to develop and CLIL can uh, um, definitely um, contribute to, to this. So character education, citizenship, communication, critical thinking and problem solving, collaboration, and creativity, character education. So these are just um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the new uh, frontiers of education uh, because of course we don't, we, we can't think that our students um, can only, you know, um, uh, uh, learn um, uh, to be competent in 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 a language means uh, not only be able to speak and right, but also, you know, to uh, interact in um, the, our knowledge society, and it, it entails uh, developing a, a wide range of um, uh, of skills. And CLIL, of course, can, can help this. Okay, so and as a consequence, our um, uh, school curricula uh, must be um, wider than in the past. And uh, um, so they, 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 uh, 21st century learning um, is, uh, you know, this is just an example, but um, uh, we have digital ICT literacy core content knowledge, cross disciplinary knowledge, um, humanistic, uh, so starting from foundational knowledge, um, which is sort of core of the learning, then humanistic, so ethic, knowledge, values, meta knowledge, um, uh, which are the 21st century skills. Of course, school curricula have, uh, and teachers and educators have to take into account uh, this new um, world. So this, um, this wide, um, you know, range of uh, uh, areas of dimensions and um, uh, so it's, it's a really demanding, um, uh, demanding uh, task um, uh, for, for our students. Okay, so our uh, learning context, uh, school context, um, learning environments have totally um, have been um, uh, reshaped. Is it okay with the uh, with the audio, Mitch? Uh, is it okay? Can can I go on? Okay. Um, so um, I was saying the uh, learning context are. Um, uh, hybrid of overlapping physical and virtual spaces flowing into and out of each other tied together by new technologies. So we are now um, uh, working in, um, and also in Italy, we are we are moving towards this um, uh, new learning environments. We have a lot of schools where settings are completely reshaped, um, uh, also with informal spaces, informal furniture. And um, uh, the added value is the use of technologies in terms of viewing um, uh, physical and, and virtual 
virtual with the use of the cloud, for example. And uh, so new technologies play a key role in, in the new learning environment. That's why we push, and in Italy, we have a lot of, um, we have a specific plan according to the new reform law, um, which is the national digital uh, plan, including different actions um, with the aim to push uh, towards technology um, from a holistic point of view and uh, um, in order to, you know, to um, uh, guide our schools towards um, a wider use of technologies in a school curriculum. Digital literacy framework, um, uh, we, um, I'm mentioning here, uh, Nikki Oakley is a very um, famous expert on uh, um, learning technologies. And um, so digital literacy is um, um, an important uh, goal for, for our students. Uh, and um, she uh, in, um, uh, designs um, uh, a framework, she defines a framework um, for the development of digital, of digital literacy um, and um, uh, there are different areas so tech skills technological skills but uh, also appropriate social practices and cultural knowledge because um, uh, you have to be to be uh, digital literate not only from the technical point of view of course but you have to uh, be able to um, remix and redesign all the different information that you can get from the internet but you can also, um, uh, of course, you have to take in mind the cultural, the cultural background, but it's important also to um, uh, use the net um, uh, according to specific um, uh, um, netiquette, so uh, appropriate social practices that can guide you while surfing the net and interacting with, uh, with other participants on, on the net. So um, the frameworks... Um, Okay, so frameworks are just, uh, uh, this is one an example. Can we go on? Maybe I'm going to go um, uh, quite faster with the, yeah, this is just um, the European Commission pushing towards um, the, the use of uh, COAL, Computer Assisted Language Learning, uh, for uh, CLIL. So uh, just recommending, and this is a report um, dating uh, back to 2014, um, uh, inviting uh, schools, inviting um, uh, also uh, educators and uh, policymakers makers to consider computer assisted language learning for CLIL. Um, going just faster, I want to uh, give the floor to, to Daniela. Yeah, this is this some research trends. I think that are not, um, uh, I think they are not um, quite visible. Okay, so COAL, which is computer assisted language learning, TEL, which is technology enhanced language learning. So um, uh, studying the, um, uh, you know, the uh, massive and um, uh, quite, you know, the integration of technology into uh, language learning um, processes. While MOL is the uh, evolution from COAL to MOL, so from computer assisted language learning to mobile assisted language learning. So the use of a smart, a smartphone and mobile devices um, for language learning and CLIL, uh, while TBLL, task-based language learning and technologies, which is, you know, task-based approach for language learning with the add-on of technology. So these are just some of the main research uh, trends in education working in the field of language learning and CLIL with the use of learning technologies. I'm going fast, just some references, but um, I'm not going to do it going deeper. These are just some reports from the British Council and um, uh, some publications that you can find on the British Council website on the, the use of technologies for language learning with practical examples and action research um, projects. But we, we can uh, give you all the references if you um, uh, if you want to. So this is just a must, just an um, uh, just um sort of monitor. Um, you have to change because you understand learning is dynamic and to not change means to quit growing. So it's just a, a need. Teachers have to reshape their, uh, their teaching practices, uh, taking into account technologies. I can, we can just go fast, and, uh, Midge, and uh, yeah, teacher training is, is essential. And um, uh, in Italy, we have a, a specific national training plan for teachers, including CLIL and language learning as top priority. Priority, but also digital, um, the digital dimension is among top priorities as well. 
so I'm going to mention Technocleal, which is the initiative that uh, we shared with uh, Daniela. We commemorated it in uh, 2014, um, uh, 15 and six, uh, sorry, 16 and 17. Um, AMOG, so massive open online course with uh, completely free within the EVO, Electronic Village Online. TISO International, uh, and every year in January, um, uh, registrations are open to this uh, free online courses on different topics. We have this one on Technocleal, so Clear and Technologies, um, lasting five weeks uh, between January and um, uh, January and. Um, uh, February, uh, with uh, a lot of webinars, with a lot of wonderful experts and meet. Uh, you can be our guest speakers, and we are we're starting from inviting you for uh, next edition in 2018. Um, uh, webinars with experts and uh, for synchronous meetings, and then um, asynchronous activities in the Moodle platform. Uh, we had outstanding feedback from our participants, 5,000 participants from all over the world, mainly Italian, uh, and we um, uh, we are you know we are quite satisfied with with this initiative, even if it's demanding a really hard job because we, we wanted to issue certificates also to our participants according to a specific framework. Um, but um, uh, it's, it's a quite, you know, very um, it, uh, outstanding, the feed, positive feedback from our participants. So, of course, it's an invitation uh, for you to, uh, this is, yeah, the, um, our platform. So you can just go on uh, and I can give um, Daniela the floor on this uh, to say something more about, about this initiative. So this is an invitation to um, join us for uh, Technoclil uh, 2018. Uh, so Daniela, you can get the floor and maybe add something about Technoclil and then you can we can move to, um, uh, to Daniela's slide. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. And thank you for, I don't know if there are any questions, but maybe uh, Mitch, you, you, you can let us know if any, anyone want to, wants to join us to take the floor now or maybe later. Uh, but Daniela, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, Letizia, thank you. And I have the, the, the other um, PowerPoint presentation, Mitch, because, yeah. Okay, after this very, I think, very useful introduction on the CLIL scenarios by Letizia, I'd like to go uh, a little bit deeper into the practice. And uh, as the focus of our presentation is uh, a, a new perspective, because it's on techniques and tools uh, to teach language to content, I just like to uh, focus my attention, start my attention on uh, the word language, uh, just taking into consideration a quotation from Etza Pound that is in the next slide. Can you move to that, please, Mitch? Yeah, um, okay. So, as you can read here, it's very uh, meaningful that the sound of human wis wisdom is not contained in any one language, and no single language is capable of expressing all forms and degrees of human comprehension. Editha was talking about digital as a new language, as a foreign language, according to David Marsh, but also to David Crystal. And um, um, I, I think that uh, for this presentation, we need to focus our attention on the word language. That means not only foreign language or a digital language, but all the means to communicate. That's why we'll focus our um, examples on uh, techniques and tools, uh, on visual, on text, on audio, and uh, on uh, videos. The next slides, uh, um, we have a, a sort of uh, um, range of different uh, websites where uh, we can uh, learn a, a foreign language. And I have chosen the best uh, learning language learning sites uh, to give you uh, a useful hint to how to improve your language if you want to, uh, to approach language and content together. So the best one is uh, um, a, a very useful, uh, um, yes, in these next slides, uh, sorry for, uh, uh, because they are uploading very slowly, they are very heavy. Uh, the, the first one is Buzu, where you can uh, learn, uh, you, you know, more than uh, the, the ones you, you can see in the icons here, because here you have uh, an example of the first, but there are more than 25 uh, languages that you can learn and speak for free. The next one is another example. 
and uh, the name of uh, this website is Duolingo. I think that uh, a lot of people use that one. And again, you have plenty of opportunities, resources and materials. So this, the, the third one is another uh, website too. And uh, it is, yes, learn a language. You know, uh, you have here um, hundreds of free language learning lessons and also games and activities. So you can learn a language through a gamification process in the sense that you can enjoy yourself you can have fun and learn speaking a specific language uh, the, the next one is uh, again another example yes uh, fsi you know uh, these are lots of courses developed by the united states government and on public domain you can uh, as uh, in the other before you can have plenty of materials and uh, there's a sort of repository for all uh, the the language uh, lesson plans and uh, vocabulary and uh, whatever you need uh, for your learning language the next one and is also the last one yes, open culture you here you have a 48 language online for free uh, and so as you see um, the essentials on the um, right hand side you have free online courses you have MOOCs, you have free movies audio books uh, and textbooks so, so plenty of materials uh, very useful resources uh, so you can surf the web and have your online lessons uh, for free now, once you have improved your language skills uh, in the language target language, I think that one of the best ways to uh, promote and to increase your uh, clear content language integrated uh, competence, you can do that through uh, networks and the communities. So one of the best examples of a clear network is the clear cascade network, or another one is the eCLEAL, that is the European Resource Center. The third one is, of course, the EVO, electronic village online uh, that Letizia mentioned just a few slides before. Uh, but there is also another community that is, has been uh, created through the uh, language uh, website uh, that is whose name is uh, Tools, where uh, Tools is a sort of community that has created an online uh, tool which enables teachers to create media-rich web pages for language learning. And, uh, um, you can find here a guidebook uh, that uh, sh uh, shows you how to exploit the online service and find a lot of opportunities uh, in a clear context. Uh, of course, you can find this in uh, many different languages. As we can see in the next slide, you have uh, the opportunity to choose your language level. In the, in the clear store, you have three uh, different spaces. The clear store, when you can find language lessons and videos on various topics, uh, then you have a word link uh, where uh, any page automatically word by word uh, um, links to an online dictionary in your choice of language and, uh, uh, and in the multi-dictionary you can switch from lang one language to the other. The best example in the next slide is uh, based on uh, the opportunity to choose uh, the language level and uh, from A1 to C2 and you also can choose the topic you want to focus your attention on. This is an example of B2 activity where you can have uh, plenty of lessons because when you want to start a clear experience I think that the best way is uh, first to focus on the language and improve your language skills. Second you have to uh, get in touch with other people to share your ideas, reflections and hints and then you have to find useful opportunities and authentic materials uh, just to, to start uh, reflecting on what you can uh, use for your own context, for your own needs. In the next slide you can also uh, find uh, a very useful example of uh, a digital lesson repository. This is a sort of library where you can find presentation projects and uh, much more. But what is nice in this website is that you can create your own lessons and share them with others so you can um, engage your students with in a fun interactive lessons and you can also monitor what your students are doing because there is a sort of authentic uh, rubric where you can uh, check the understanding through quizzes and discussions.
And uh, the next example comes from Yes, a lesson stream where you can start also focusing on uh, the specific uh, skills. So first you improve your language, then you share your ideas with other people in different communities, then you start uh, uh, reflecting on uh, useful and authentic examples of lessons already created, and then you start working on uh, the different skills. Uh, the selection here starts with uh, clear lessons where you can have the opportunity to expose your students uh, to listening and watching activities. So that is the first point when you want to engage in a language lesson. The second one, in focus the attention. The next one, the next slides. Instead, focus the attention on a video um, exploitation and uh, one of the best examples for this is of course at Khan Academy. Khan Academy has uh, uh, hundreds tons of videos with uh, specific techniques so where you have a blackboard uh, like the, 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 the traditional one we had in the classroom with only uh, a, just a chalk, um, a piece of chalk, um, a color chalk that moves on the screen, and uh, the explanation is uh, um, uh, from it, um, is given uh, uh, just without uh, uh, the, the the presence of the speaker. Uh, in they study this because it's very useful to grasp uh, people's attention. You have plenty of videos on different subjects. You can create your own class and share the videos with your students but as together with the video there is also um, the possibility to practice with uh, quizzes and uh, specific exercises so multiple choice uh, filling the gaps or uh, matching or whatever you need uh, just to check uh, students' uh, uh, comprehension. Uh, you, uh, uh, the best way is to enroll in that and to manage your own classes uh, and have your students uh, be exposed to authentic video lessons uh, with a lot of practice that you can just uh, um, uh, recreate for your own needs uh, for your students' context. The next lesson, the next slide is about... Uh, Uh, how uh, to plan your own specific lesson. So, first you can have best examples in order to check how a class lesson is made. Then you can start planning your own. And this wonderful tool is Learning Designer. Well, in this Learning Designer, as you can see from this framework, you can add your own content, you can create your own account, and you can choose the topic of your lesson. You can uh, establish uh, the time you want to dedicate to the different parts of your lessons that appear in uh, the, 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 the uh, boxes uh, below. Here we have three boxes, but you can have uh, whatever, uh, whatever you want. And uh, you add the type of activity you, you imagine students have to do. If they have to, to be engaged in a sort of discussion or uh, actively to um, to work on something or to reflect or to analyze whatever you need. As you can see uh, in uh, the different boxes, uh, you can choose the type of activity. You can add the text you want to, pro uh, to promote. You can uh, describe uh, with uh, specific details uh, what you're going to propose to your students and have them uh, work uh, both individually or in pairs or in um, groups. And uh, just starting planning in different boxes, the different steps of your lesson plan, you can have at the end of general idea of what the lesson is going to be, a, a sort of um, a graphic uh, representation where you also have a, a, a specific percentage for each part of the lesson. Uh, you see here different colors, they are dedicating the, to the different parts of the lesson. And you have a certain amount of quantity dedicated to knowledge, 
storage, and then another part dedicated to classify, and then the other one identify or organize or produce. In this way, you can also um, measure the equilibrium of different parts, and you can also uh, check how many um, students are involved, how they are involved, and in which part and when they are involved in the different parts of the lessons. So you can rethink in an action research model uh, to what, uh, on what you are planning and uh, reshape your framework of your lesson. The learning design is a free online uh, web tool that uh, permits also that uh, you uh, to share your lesson plan to a PDF uh, document or on uh, a specific uh, website or whatever you want to do that. The next slide is uh, about uh, the um, the language in itself we say that we have to focus our attention on uh, improving language skills uh, through content and when we plan a specific lesson uh, what we do um, uh, before to a learning design tool we have also to choose the specific language we want to involve uh, according to the topic of our lesson and uh, clear uh, permits to focus on the three different aspects of, of language that is uh, the the language of learning the language for learning and the language to learning in the next slide we we can understand what it means because uh, the language learning in, in the next slide we, if Mitch you can uh, just pass to that one next please Yes, here you can see that the uh, the, the, the obvious, uh, the, the, the what, the content of our lesson, the, the through is the why, that is the cognition and the thinking skills that we want to activate just to, to, to have our students acquire a new knowledge. But there is also the first, that is the how to uh, in uh, the structures, the function, all the grammar system and metacognition that is involved in a clear lesson. Uh, in the next slide, we have a very uh, useful and uh, excellent example of uh, the uh, lesson plan uh, created on ecosystems uh, where all of the four points of a clear lesson, that is communication, content, culture and cognition are involved, but also uh, how the, the, the language of learning, the language for learning and the language through learning are um, implicit in uh, the lesson plan. As you can see, this is a perfect example on, on how uh, to give, um, a, to, to, to plan a lesson, to give a visual idea of what you are going to do. I did say at the beginning of my presentation that we have to focus on language and language does not mean only uh, the, the, lang the foreign language we teach or we learn. Language means also the language you use to communicate and the is a, is a, a perfect example of how we communicate the idea we have for lesson planning to a, vis a visual aid that is a graphic or a, a mind map as you can see in this picture. Uh, so language. In the next slide, uh, we have to to give you. We want to give you some um, free examples of how to build your lesson plans and how to to create your activities through web tools that enhance language uh, focus. Uh, the first one is well, snappy words. The second is visual words, and the, the third one is insert growth. In uh, these are three uh, of the best examples of visual dictionary. What do we mean by visual, dic uh, visual dictionaries? Uh, next slide uh, gives you a clear example of what we mean. If I want to focus on a specific topic, and this is the case I chose for you, that is language, that is keyword, that's what we are using today, uh, we have a sort of explosion of all the different words that are related to the topic one, to the target one. And what is useful for us as we have to to enhance a, a language acquisition and a language 
um, uh, increase of incompetence, we have a possibility to, to look at uh, what is at the bottom of this uh, slide. This is the difference in colors of nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs, and also the uh, relationship and that is um, that exists before uh, between each word. Each word has its specific definition. So if we scroll, of course, we cannot do that now because we are not online. But if we scroll, when we go to the website, we, if we scroll on the bubble, we have the perfect definition of what the word means. And this is very useful if you want to start planning your lesson on different contents that you acquire the specific language to teach that content. And if you make your first research on less items that are connected to that topic, it is very useful that you create your own uh, bunch of uh, words that and definition that can help you to introduce the topic, but also can help your students uh, to acquire new words and new language and new lexical areas. The next one is uh, the example of Instagram. Uh, the, the, the previous was from Snappy Words, the second one is from Instagram. Instagram is even better because it not only gives the definition of different words, if you see the, the hotspots, the yellow ones are hotspots where you can click and scroll the mouse on and you can have the definition. But on the left hand side, you can see it that for each item you have uh, different opportunities. You can have the key facts, you can have the websites that go, go deeper into the matter what you're going to research. And then you have the videos on that topic. Also, the concept is uh, all linked uh, in, uh, in a sort of mind map. And then the different images that you can use for introducing your topic. So if you plan to decide, if you plan uh, to um, a specific lesson on a certain topic, the first sets come from uh, acquiring your own lexical um, uh, area and in so that you can introduce and can create, uh, create exercise, you can have your students learn new words because vocabulary built, of course, all their language level. And uh, you can also create your own classes on this website that I repeat is Instagram and you can take notes uh, uh, to, uh, throughout your own lesson. The next slide is based on uh, uh, the tag cloud. Uh, that is a, a, a very useful uh, way to represent different concepts to uh, meaningful words. As you see, we just worked on this, that it is uh, a mixture of uh, words uh, linked to CLIL, uh, that is hot, high order thinking skills, or uh, um, uh, cognitive academic language proficiency, uh, or uh, basic intermediate communication skills, uh, or uh, technology and the four skills, the skills that uh, Letizia mentioned before. How to create uh, this uh, very, um, um, very useful uh, cloud of words? You have plenty of softwares. So one we chose was the Wordle, uh, where you can also decide uh, the, the language you want to use, uh, the font that you want to, to represent your ideas, the layout that words have to take on the screen, and the color to give a different impact on what you're teaching. So it's a different way to to work on words. First, you decide the topic, and then you choose the words related to that topic, and then you can represent this uh, sort of tag cloud to uh, introduce that. The next one is uh, for cognitive academic language proficiency skills because it's uh, um, a website for um, that um, extract uh, keywords from a text. If you want to introduce a topic and you want to find out what are the keywords from that text, you can uh, paste it in this website and you can have whatever you need to create your own uh, lesson with word examples. Next, always uh, working on um, words, but from a specific um, perspective is um, 
the, the vocabulary from the academic word list. And uh, uh, it is uh, a list of words uh, in a very high position that can be uh, found in different sections of the website uh, with our cloud on uh, graphics or whatever you want. Uh, so you can exercise uh, different skills, uh, reading, writing, reading, speaking, or also vocabulary and uh, work at uh, at a very high level on language uh, to improve uh, your uh, students' language uh, competencies. The next one is shift to another skill, that is uh, writing. How can we enhance the writing skills? Well, the best way is to a brainstorming activity on a notice digger's uh, uh, screen. And like one of the best example is Padlet. While you have a blank wall, of course, here you have a picture on the, the background, but just to do represent uh, the Europe, but you can put on it whatever you want and students can post their ideas and exercise the writing skills. As well as exercising writing skills, you can go to another one that is next slide, where uh, I think that the one of the best uh, used uh, tools, web tools and um, uh, whatever, that is uh, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, P, uh, the uh, wiki. And uh, one of the hosts for wikis is PB Works. When you can enhance, enhance uh, uh, not only individual writing, but also collaborative writing. A lot of people can share the same website and can add their own contribution uh, to produce together uh, something useful uh, working on a project. The next one is um, uh, once you have written uh, plenty of materials and you want to help your students uh, to um, reword what they have written or uh, to simplify their uh, text, it is very useful to paste the, the bunch of text here inside and the system uh, gives you um, a, a sort of summary of what you have uh, created. Also, uh, selecting uh, the, the materials and uh, uh, selecting words and uh, saving time for uh, your engaging lessons. Uh, the next one is uh, um, in, another example uh, of writing uh, skills or to enhance writing skills, but organizing your ideas to a mind map uh, software that is a poplet. And then we have in the next slide a way to uh, mix uh, two different languages. That is text and uh, uh, pictures. Uh, ThinkLink, uh, that is the website where, where you can upload a picture and then uh, we, you can create all the hotspots that you can see here, uh, the blank uh, um, dots, uh, where you can add text. So if you want to your student to describe a picture, you can exercise uh, both the writing skills and uh, the function of describing uh, this is in, in towards communication uh, with this uh, very useful website. Then um, you can have another sort of visual representation to Gloucester. Gloucester is a sort of multimedia um, poster uh, with the possibility to uh, mix uh, different media, that is, uh, different languages, as I said at the beginning, that is, text, audio, videos, and pictures. Uh, then uh, the last but not least important skill in the next slide is how to enhance speaking activities uh, through Vox or Pop. It is a voice-based uh, e-learning tools. Once you have uh, focused, of course, on the language skills you want to improve, uh, selecting one or the other, uh, you can also create, uh, through the example in the next slide, a sort of uh, um, quizzes with uh, learning apps, uh, the wonderful site uh, where you can have plenty of activities created for your students. Uh, here you find uh, both a repository of uh, lessons created by other people, but you can also find examples of how to create uh, through tutorials uh, your lessons by yourselves. So 
once uh, selected the topic, once uh, um, selected a video to introduce the lessons you can and uh, uh, once focusing on the language you need for that lesson, you can also uh, create your own activities uh, to check students' comprehension. Uh, of course, you have, in, so we jump to the next slide, of course, we have to, to, to check and monitor our students' uh, progress and uh, we can do the best uh, to do this start. It is um, a, a tool to create a rubric. You can choose the product topic, you can choose uh, the um, template uh, to create your own rubric and you can have it uh, done uh, through this uh, very useful website. So plenty of materials, plenty of ideas, uh, how can we organize all these uh, techniques, all these uh, tools, all these websites uh, in, a, in a teaching uh, path. If we jump to the next slide we can see that the Bloom Saxonomy that started in 1960s and was revised at the end of the 20, uh, 21st century uh, and then uh, when it was revised again uh, with the acting of the tech, uh, the web tools, uh, web 2.0 tools, uh, gives us the idea how we can uh, put all these techniques uh, and tools in a sort of gradual order and our progress. Uh, the, the, the taxonomy here starts with remembering and that's passive shift to the understanding process. Then you have the possibility to apply, to analyze, to evaluate, and at the end to promote the 20th century, uh, first century uh, skills of our students uh, to create. All these tech tools and web tools can be put in the different sp steps of this taxonomy to have an order of how to progress uh, to our teaching. The next one gives a different perspective of how these web tools can also be ordered uh, just taking into consideration uh, the different intelligences. And I think that it is a very useful example to do that. The same years for the next one, where instead of the multiple intelligences, we have the possibility to reflect on how to differentiate some different literacies. Literacies so were talking about the different skills of the 21st centuries and also the literacy to promote. And here you have all of them just put in order with all the apps and tools so we have to enhance their skills and also yeah the last one and is on the um, possibility uh, to use uh, the mobile systems uh, um, mobile apps uh, and to to mix uh, uh, the the blooms of taxonomy for ipads or whatever tablet or mobile uh, phone smartphone you want to use just focus it on uh, the blooms taxonomy bloom taxonomy that is also the basis of the next slide where you can have an example a wonderful example of how to enhance uh, the different thinking skills. Uh, I say before that with clear content language integrating learning, we shift from uh, a low order thinking skills uh, to high order thinking skills. Uh, that is what is represented in uh, these features. And uh, we can do that just mixing this with the tag tools and thinking skills uh, to have a, um, the best clear solution. Uh, in uh, the next slide, we have uh, uh, just to summarize uh, a sort of uh, um, example of how we can uh, uh, promote this kind of activities in order to reach what are called the four C's that are communication uh, to the different speaking and listening skills or writing and reading. The collaboration when we have students work together through collaborative tools when we enhance critical thinking uh, and uh, when we want them uh, to create uh, digital posters or the special work, creative writing or whatever we want to enhance uh, creativity. So all this is uh, just to uh, um, uh, stimulate a different type of uh, um, understanding and the comprehension of what we want to teach on a certain content but at the same time when we want to improve their language their language skills and their language competencies if we were we go to the last slide yes i think it's the last one 
I think that uh, we, um, through all of this, uh, sorry for being uh, too uh, quick, but uh, and the time was passing and I didn't want uh, just uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to take time over the, the, the one that was established. Uh, when we want to promote all these different activities, when we want to enhance language uh, competencies, when we want to uh, simulate uh, lower order thinking skills, or higher order thinking skills of course we activate a sort of different process in the classroom and this makes a change in the, the learning environment we, we, we just create a different type of lesson together with our students so we have two different processes that go together once towards our students that is the teaching one the other one that comes towards us from our students that is the learning one they cross together and they activate in a very different perspectives and that what is why i want to uh, end this uh, presentation with the, the quotation i had before that is by heather orkner that is uh, what the difference based on the difference from space uh, to um, place we we have a space but when we want to create effective lessons we have to create a place whereas space refers to the structure, the medical qualities of physical environment. When we enhance these processes, it becomes a place that is something that includes the dimension of, of a lived experience that means interaction between the teachers and students and students and students and it implies the different use of a space by people who inhabit it thank you for listening and i'm now here for your questions if you have one so uh so i was wondering, I was wondering. Uh, let me let me mute you for a second while while i'm talking uh, i was wondering if we could have a volunteer who could then recite all the tools that you mentioned in your presentation and do it alphabetically. <laughs> it would be great. So I do want to let people know that we're going to be making these slides uh, available. So you don't have to have memorized all those applications. That was a, that was a lot. You know, I had no idea that there were so many different uh, ways of having students use use. Um, language in order to express themselves for some of which as you as you mentioned are going to are primarily used for the teaching part of it some of it is used to cement in the learning part and then um and then different aspects of the of language with you know starting in vocabulary and uh going to i guess comprehension problem solving um and expression yes of course yes the four skills or the five skills uh, just speaking, listening, writing, reading, and of course, interacting. That is the most important one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that maybe we should do a session in the fall where we pick maybe four or five of these different tools that you brought up and really delve into them and how you would pull them into the classroom for those different five you know five communication skills yeah, you can right. plan having different session and just to dedicate one of each session to one of the language skills you want to improve so we can dedicate one on vocabulary one on the listening skills how to improve mm -hmm. that or speaking skills or writing whatever so we can just focus just on one language it was just to be very clear and the uh, whole idea of how to enhance language a bit all together mm -hmm. but if you want it's a pleasure for us uh, to organize different sessions and uh, uh, just to exploit the potentialities of all the, these different tools and would be great uh, to go on the internet and show people how to use them and so to, to surf the page and then have a, a mm -hmm. direct example of how to create this and how to start working and using them a sort of tutorial online uh, so a live tutorial I mean. And I guess to a certain extent, yeah, people, can get that, extent people can get uh, that over time uh, in your CLIL MOOC that's coming up in 2017 or 2018. 
Aileen, yes, okay. We have just finished the, the, the 2017 edition. We had one in 2014, a second one 2016, and the third and very successful one 2017. And we're planning to have another one next year uh, in January, I think in uh, the five weeks in January and February. Uh, they are organized within the uh, Electronic Village Online initiatives uh, that are managed by TESOL International. So that's why we're just organizing it again. So I think that if people so were, interested, people were interested, they should note one of these one of email these addresses here, email and, address and, contact here and, and contact you. Yes. And then you could provide them the information. Provide them the information. Yes, of course. And they can also join us in the Facebook group with, that is still active with more than uh, 6,500 participants. So we just share ideas, uh, tools, uh, reflections, and uh, uh, news, whatever we, we want to know about the CLIL initiatives. So they can, you can join us. Uh, you are welcome. And I thought yeah, well, Leticia well, did an excellent job uh, presenting the, the, uh, the academic, academic basis, basis and theoretical basis for using, using the in the, in the, in the classroom. The classroom. In the classroom. And unfortunately, yeah. she had to unfortunately, leave. She had to leave. Uh, yes, we. She had said that before. She had to leave the office. Uh, otherwise, it was a problem for her. So we had. We 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 decided to share the, the two parts uh, theoretically and practically. And uh, we we always work together. We are called twins uh, in the on web. So <laughs> we just share whatever we want to do together. Courses, uh, uh, papers, uh, webinars, uh, whatever we do, we do together. Yes. So, okay, so do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to impart to people? Sorry? Do you, do you, you have a summary? You have a summary? Or, or, like, if you were to pick three things three that people, things should, people remember should remember from today, remember from today. What would those yes, three things be? What would those three things be? Language. I think that when they start the cleaning, that was, I mean, when they start the process with content language integrated learning, they have to focus on language before. If they can manage language, they can do whatever they want. Of course, they can use authentic materials. So I just uh, suggest them to focus on language and use authentic material and stimulate active learning and involving students as much as possible. But focus on language, it is very important. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Thank, thank you to all of you. Okay, ciao. Okay, yeah, ciao. Bye-bye, and, 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 ciao. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. okay, and this is Mitch Weisberg, and I'm signing off for EdShed Interactive. I hope to see you all next week and at future EdShed Interactives. Uh, have a very happy summer. Bye.